Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access to Trader.com. Uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody is uh, doing well in their careers and their journeys. If you're starting up, hopefully you are, uh, you know, building a solid uh, foundation. If you are uh, kind of in in no man's land, um, kind of looking for yourself, uh, and you've been, uh, you know, kind of a viewer of this channel or trying to figure out, hey, you know, what's this guy talking about? Uh, about these pivots. Look, if you, if you want to try pivots, uh, just to give you an understanding, the PS60 theory is just like any other methodology, whether you're looking at VWAP, uh, Bollinger Bands, um, Fibonacci retracements, pitchforks, whatever the case may be, it's all based on uh, technical analysis. We just caught a little bit of an edge, a little bit more of a lot of an edge, uh, between stocks trading from supply to supply uh, and demand to demand, and that's what we pretty much do on a daily basis. Uh, if you are interested, there's a discounted link uh, below. It's good for uh, the weekend. You know, again, kick the tires, try it out. I think you, especially if you are an intraday trader, uh, you are going to uh, kind of appreciate the way of looking at the market that is not uh, normal. Other than that, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. If you can just drop a like, take a second of your time, it'll really show support for the channel. And hopefully, I'll continue to give you guys day-to-day uh, -day, uh, value. So let's talk about the tape. Uh, two weeks ago, we saw a major breakdown of uh, the NASDAQ 100, uh, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ last week uh, was down 5.5% going into uh, this week. And the question was, well, can these earnings, right? Can these earnings players... Uh, can they lift the market back up? They actually did very, very well. Um, if you look at the final numbers, the NASDAQ gave kind of came back over 4%. Didn't quite make back uh, all of last week's uh, losses, but really good uh, directional bias this week. Uh, they could have literally turned over. There was a whole slew of data came out this week, uh, but the Bulls did their job and they did it very, very well. The question is now, can we get back above the 50-day moving average? Because you see it all the time, uh, major breakdowns, uh, major technical damage occurs. There's dead cat balances. They get rejected into supply. They look great. Everything looks fine. And then turn around and we're back to the lows. That's not what the bulls want, okay? Uh, the bulls uh, desperately need to get back above 435 on the QQQs. That's the big number. That's the number they lost uh, two weeks ago. And that's why we had a 5.5% decline. And that's the number they have to reclaim back uh, for the bulls to continue to charge. Uh, we kicked off uh, earnings season. It was, it was technically last week with Netflix, but uh, you had Tesla come out with earnings. Um, and, you know, you saw a lot of traders talking about, well, how can Tesla go higher, right? How can Tesla go higher? How can Meta have such a great quarter? How can they blow up? It's, it's actually, it's kind of rational when you think about it, right? When you look, let's take a look at Tesla's first. Uh, and I've always said this, it, it's not about the market, it's not about a stock coming out with earnings that's good or bad. The question is, how is the market going to respond? So perfect example, Tesla had a, a, a horrible quarter. I mean, let's let's call it what it is. Um, they had a horrible quarter. Uh, they said it was probably the, the worst earnings they've seen since 2012. But yet the stock had a really, really great rally uh, in the last three days, going from uh, 147 all the way up to 172. Uh, Meta is the flip side, right? Meta is the flip side. They they beat their numbers. Everything looked great. Their guidance looked good, but the stock went down a lot, right? The stock went down a lot yesterday before recovering. And then you see a lot of new traders saying, well, what gives here? How could Tesla come out with such horrible numbers and the stock rally, and then while Meta comes out with great numbers, and the stock tanks. Yeah, welcome to trading, right? Welcome to trading, welcome to Wall Street. That's why we keep on reiterating uh, the, the same thing over and over again. And you can have the earnings right in your hand. It doesn't mean that the stock market is going to validate uh, the earnings on the move that it's supposed to. And that's the point. You know, Tesla was down 
41% going into the print. Meta had an incredible run for the last two years. So it's not a matter of what their earnings are. Because again, if you go into Tesla's earnings, nobody, you, you could have the biggest bull on the planet. Nobody had any optimism into the quarter. And that's why the stock rallied. Case in point today with Snapchat. And I've showed quarter, look, guys, look how many quarters Snapchat blew up, right? It, it blew up the previous quarter on earnings. They blew up the previous, previous quarter on earnings. They blew up the previous, previous, previous earnings on, on, on uh, earnings. They blew up, you, you kind of get the picture. That's four quarters in a row going back, they blew up on earnings, right? Excuse me, five. Let's see if we get six. Six. So it was the same thing that happened to Snapchat as it did to Tesla, right? There was just no, there was no, you know, excitement. There was nothing, you know, people have gone burned at the earnings six consecutive quarters. The stock was left for dead. Nobody cares. Like Kylie, you know, Kylie Jenner came out a couple of years ago and said, who still goes on Snapchat, right? So, you know, this was the same type of scenario. There was nobody left for dead and the stock had a pretty big run, right? Does it mean this is going to be the, the bottom for Snapchat? Does it mean it's going to be the bottom for Tesla? We'll see. What the Tesla bulls need to do, and I don't want to really spend a lot of time on Snapchat, but what Tesla needs to do going into this week is really ask the question. It's a very open-ended question. It's a very honest question. And here it is, right? The bull case is, while bad news is already out, everybody's numb to it. If we can just get back above the 50-day moving average on Tesla, we could have a really, really exaggerated run, multi-week, multi-month run right? That's the bull case. The bear case is, well, wait a minute, right? We get the idea that nobody was excited about the stock. We get the idea that nobody cared about it. There was no optimism in the stock. We got it, right? It did have a nice you know, nice two, three day run. But at the end of the day, they had their worst quarter in 12 years. And that's the bear case. So going into the next week, uh, obviously, uh, any close above the 50 day moving average on Tesla, the last time Tesla was above the 50-day moving average, it was when it was hanging on to life on January the 8th. So the idea that we are so close to getting back above the 50-day moving average, that's a big, big deal, especially uh, on long risk on case. Obviously, uh, the bears need to kind of fight them off, reclaim back the 510 cross and start taking back uh, the lows. Uh, name, for example, like Microsoft, right? You know, Microsoft had a good quarter, right? Had a good quarter, you know, had a, had a nice spike uh, initially uh, after hours and kind of just faded, faded for the rest of the day. Doesn't mean uh, it's bad or good going into next week. But the one thing that we do know, Microsoft, again, got rejected below the 50-day moving average on the earnings gap. So that's kind of what we're looking for. Microsoft, that's kind of what we're looking for on Tesla as well. Can they reclaim those big levels going into next week? A name, for example, like um, like name, for example, like Google. Google actually had a nice quarter, uh, announced a nice buyback, uh, also announced a nice dividend, and yada yada yada. We've been saying this for weeks. This is even when the market came in five and a half percent. You know, Google stood very very tall, and you know this is the you know this is the the reality of Google had a nice quarter. Uh, it gapped up and kind of just went sideways for the rest. Uh, of the week. Is there going to be some profit taking at some point next week on Google? Probably, uh, but use weakness to uh, get the name uh, going. This is the one that's been an absolute rock star has been NVIDIA. Uh, NVIDIA today reclaimed the 50-day moving average. And that is the theme, right? Tesla needs to reclaim. Microsoft needs to reclaim. NVIDIA reclaimed. Guys, look at the last time NVIDIA reclaimed the 50-day moving average. It was on November the 2nd. You see this? Right, November the second, the stock was at four hundred and thirty-eight dollars. Reclaimed the fifty-day, and the stock soon after, or months after, went from four thirty-eight all the way to nine seventy-four. So the idea that we reclaim back the fifty-day moving average today on the close—that's a huge deal, folks. An absolute huge deal. Uh, all day, folks. All day, they were coming in size buyers. For next week's uh, 900 calls, uh, all it needs to do is confirm this channel here on the April 17 highs. If it does so, you know you have room not only to 900, you have room all the way up to uh, 930. So that looks uh, really, really uh, good as well. Uh, look at a name, for example, like AMD. Right? AMD has not been as lucky 
uh, as NVIDIA. NVIDIA has crawled all the way back up to the 50-day moving average. Uh, this has been underneath the 50-day for a very, very long time. But at least you can see here there's a tradable range on the horizon for next week. If we continue to rally, and obviously that's a very big if, uh, if AMD starts getting above the April channel, maybe you could start moving back to the 20-day supply. So there's a lot of names uh, that look really, really good uh, going into this week. The question is going into this week is, again, can the bulls extend this rally or will the bears reject them at the 50-day moving average? And this will all be deemed as a dead cat bounce. But honestly, I don't care what you call it. You can put a lipstick on a pig. It's still a pig, right? Potato, potato, tomato, tomato. We had a great, great action this week, both on the long and the short side. So as long as you're treating it on a day-to-day -day basis and you're not making these outlandish predictions or outlandish guessing or trying to act smart, you're going to be all right on a day-to-day -day basis. If you're turning around and go, well, I think, you know, you know, I think you know, Tesla will be at 200 next week. Well, again, doesn't Tesla need to reclaim back the 50-day moving average first? And again, this has been a long time. We're going all the way back to January since we've been over the 50 days. So over the 50-day bullish, under the 50-day bearish, we have stocks that are finally getting back above the 50, where stocks are trying to get back above the 50. So if the bulls can hold serve and negate bad news and try to continue uh, the pretty solid earnings flow so far in uh, the tech space, then we have a shot, right? We have a shot to get back above the 50 and then risk is uh, all the way on. Uh, names that are coming out with earnings uh, this week. Let me take a quick glance. Um, okay, you got earnings for next week. Monday is really nobody. Uh, Tuesday, we have, let's see here. Tuesday, we have Starbucks, McDonald's, Coke, Amazon, AMD. Obviously, AMD and Amazon are going to be the big ones in uh, the beta space. You got uh, Triple M, Eli Lilly as well. Uh, Wednesday, you have Qualcomm, Pfizer, eBay, uh, MasterCard, nothing really, anything that crazy. Some, some insurance companies. Thursday, you have Apple, which obviously is going to be the big one. Uh, Cloudfare, NET, DraftKings. We saw some $50 calls coming in for DraftKings. Uh, Cigna, Amgen, and I think that is obviously a uh, Apple is going to be the highlighted there. Uh, sales, slow sales of China iPhones uh, is again, is the question is, is it already baked into earnings? Again, we'll see there. And Friday, I don't believe there's any, uh, any, anything strong going into uh, next week. Uh, other than that, guys, let me give you guys some ideas that I do like uh, for next week. Obviously, NVIDIA, I love, uh, absolutely love. We had a great, great pivot on NVIDIA today. Some reason Twitter is not working, or is it working? Oh, it is working. Look at that, it is working. All right, so let me get, show you guys some pivots we had uh, for today. Uh, Nvidia, this was the big one right here. Uh, this was the absolute big one right here. In Nvidia, uh, 841 confirmed and 843 confirmed. That was basically the 50 day. Uh, Nvidia, you know, just a rock star, absolute rock star. Put up a forty dollar candle. Congratulations for you guys. We're still holding a runner. I don't have any. Um, I will be looking to uh, buy it for next week, but any dip on NVIDIA, I love and think it confirmed this channel here, but big, big 40 point move, 50 point move today on NVIDIA. Let's see what else. Uh, Meta got rejected back at yesterday's highs. Uh, Microsoft never got there. Uh, Tesla, you know, nice little bump. Uh, you know, day three got a little tired, ran up about a dollar and a half. Uh, nothing really crazy there. Uh, Intel. Intel gave a nice wash. Uh, Intel had a you know cr crappy quarter. Uh, 71, 31, 74. If it builds below, uh, can flush more. Here was Intel. You can see the 60 minute view here, right here, perfectly. Right, 31, 74, 31, 74. Lost the lows and traded all the way down to 30 and changed. So nice move there. But other than that, man, really good week. Really, really good solid week. Uh, I know a lot of you guys did very, very well. Uh, the key is again. Just be professional. Before we teach you um, how to be a trader, we have to have the mindset of being a professional. Uh, I don't care if you're trading for 20 years, 20 months, or 20 minutes. Act like a professional. I don't care if you have a $2 account or a $2 million account. Act like a professional. If you act like a professional, you're going to get good habits. You're going to omit bad ones. You slowly but surely, your FOMO and your emotions throughout time is going to start to alleviate your decision-making 
and you are going to be on the right track and the right side of solvency. Guys, have a great night, everybody. Have an awesome weekend. Love, prayers, and health to everybody. And with God's help, I will see you all on Monday. Take care.